Ta'ala's remembrance is a great ni'mah and treasure for a person. When a person remembers Allah, when he does the dhikr of Allah, when he remembers his Lord, our pious predecessors state that, beautiful point this is, that when a person remembers Allah Ta'ala, then what is the beautiful unique characteristic at that time? is that Allah Ta'ala loves that person as well at the same time. Whether we love or not, but Allah most definitely starts to love that person. Allah Ta'ala says that I in turn love you and they love me. So Allah Ta'ala first speaks and mentions himself. Allah Ta'ala says that I love you at that time. So this... Can there be a greater and bigger gift and reward and treasure than this for doing the dhikr of Allah? The Allah Ta'ala says, I give that person the capability and tawfiq to do the dhikr whom I love. Whom I love. Allah Ta'ala says, the person that I prefer, that I love, I give him or her the tawfiq to do my dhikr, to remember me. This is a great na'am. Great na'am. Allah Ta'ala loves those people who remember him, who do his dhikr. And that is why... Allah Ta'ala says that the whole universe starts to love the dhakirin, the creatures, the nature. When they do dua, Allah Ta'ala accepts their duas. And as careful and with respect and adab and preparation, we remember, we remember Allah, then our status and rank increases, will increase. And this is such a clear and pure path towards our destination. Allah Ta'ala has given us this path that recognize me, your Lord, your Creator, your Rabb, get closer to Him. And attain the love and the muhabbat of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. What a great uh, aim and mission in life for us to attain. That Allah ta'ala gives us the beautiful clear path that we become dhakir. We become those who remember Him, Allah, and get close to His love. Close your eyes, don't look at how much are you a sinner, I've got deficiencies, things lacking in me, no. Just grab hold of the path of the dhikr of Allah, alhamdulillah, and Allah ta'ala will start to love you. Allah will start to love you. See this, there are such examples that anybody, any pious predecessor before us never reached to Allah Ta'ala's nearness without doing the dhikr of Allah. Every pious person before us reached close to Allah due to the dhikr, due to Allah's remembrance, due to his dhikr. This is a great na'mah, my friends. My friends, may Allah Ta'ala give us qadr and appreciation of this However great the ni'mah is, that is the more the person should run after that practice. The dhakir, it is not his status, my Hazrat, my Shaykh used to say, it is not the quality, the status of a dhakir that Allah Ta'ala loves him, and that person then disobeys his Lord. This is not correct, this is bad, this is weird, this is not good. A dhakir, a person who remembers Allah, a dhakir who does Allah Ta'ala's dhikr, he should try his best that he doesn't disobey his Lord, his Creator, who he's remembering. Otherwise Allah Ta'ala will be displeased with us that I've given you a gift, a treasure, I love you. And the fact that I love you, I've given you the tawfiq to do my dhikr. And and despite that, you you, you go towards shaitan's invitation. So the dhakir, the shakir, who does dhikr of Allah, who does shukr of Allah, they are unique people. They should be cautious and careful. Allah is He happy with me at this time, He loves me. I shouldn't say such words due to which Allah will be displeased with me. Especially, especially the people who do dhikr, the dhakirin, the salikin, they should be careful. And then the doors to the light, the anwarat, they open. They open. And despite this, there's no other maqsad or objective of doing dhikr. There's no other objective. The maqsad, the objective of doing Allah Ta'ala's dhikr is to attain Allah Ta'ala's raza, His pleasure, for Him to be pleased with us. And Allah has given us the path, that's it. Do dhikr, have dhikr, do dhikr. But with dhikr, there should be no sins. 
There should be no sins. The dhakirin who remember Allah, they, the genuine, they don't look at small sin, big sin, medium sin, or this is a small sin, I have to do this, I can't get away from this. Oh khair, this is a small thing, it's not important. There's no such thing as a small sin. The definition of sin is such that a person who is disobeying Allah, and how can Allah be pleased if we are disobeying Him? So we prostrate and we keep disobeying Allah. And shaitan, he used to do a lot of sujood, he used to do ibadat, he used to remember Allah. But the disobedience he did, and then Allah Ta'ala expelled him. He didn't follow the order of Allah, he didn't obey the order of Allah, Allah Ta'ala shunned him, Allah expelled him. So see this, that we are close to Allah, and then we disobey. So he was close to Allah, shaitan, very close. There was one order, he rejected it openly, and Allah Ta'ala said, be gone. Okay, fine, we are weak, we are weak. But us weak people, Allah Ta'ala has still given us a great gift and reward. And this was the shan of the walis of Allah. They used to sit in isolation in the house of Allah and do Allah Ta'ala's dhikr. This was not a small thing. This is history. History is full of these examples. I tell you, I swear by Allah, this is history. This is not hard. It's unique. So if you find a diamond, you know, the kohi nur, the diamond, if I give that, or we get that in our hands, in our palm, or a diamond of precious stone, it's unique. It's great. So this style, sitting in the masjid, remembering Allah, it's the night time. And then such places where the earth is barren, where the, the environment around is barren, the winds are barren, empty. And then despite all of the barren and the emptiness and the, you can say, still life around us, and then to sit, to revive the things around us, the things that are not with the life to revive them. This earth was thirsty. And did they know? Did this earth know what is the name of Allah? These walls didn't know the name of Allah. The winds around us, the air around us didn't know about the name of Allah, hadn't been recited around it. So then this dead earth and soil and grass and the air and the winds around us, everything will bear witness for us on the day of judgment. They will be shahid. They will bear witness and they will say, Allah Ta'ala, these were the people of Iman who remembered you. So there are many hadith we hear that one mountain says to another mountain, that has anyone walked past you who has done dhikr? We think this is a mountain, a rock or dust or soil or a tree. But everything in the world which Allah Ta'ala has created, the nature recognizes the dhakir. That's why Allah Ta'ala says that I love him, the dhakir. And on top of that, the nature loves him. We don't love Allah, but Allah loves us. Not because we do dhikr that they recognize us, the, the universe, the creation. Allah says, no, I love him. And that's why in turn, the creation, the nature remembers and loves us also. Allah says, I love the dhakir. Look how Allah Ta'ala elevates the person who remembers him. Allah has mentioned his qualities. And Allah Ta'ala has given method of how a person and what we should do to remember him. So brothers, these few words that came to my mind, uh, for the shukr of Allah, I've mentioned them. I'm a shakir and I felt in my heart to do the shukr of Allah. It's not a speech, it's not a lecture. I wasn't in the mood, I came here to do dhikr. But my heart felt that we should do the shukr of Allah. We should be grateful to Allah. Where are we? Where is your name? Where is this earth? Where we are passing through this dunya in laziness, in neglect, wasting time. And Allah, you pulled us away from that and brought us to your name, to your dhikr. Think, think, can I think of this? We are doing this, aren't we? And we think that we are doing it. It's normal for us, I swear. By Allah, all your life, a person can pass his time in the life. He can go into the grave. He doesn't even know what is dhikr. He's not even looked towards his heart. That is the name of Allah in my heart. He doesn't even know that in my body, how many lataif are there? How many lessons are there? How many levels are there? He doesn't know that every portion of me Allah Ta'ala gave for his remembrance. MashaAllah, we are all sitting down. Do you have this feeling? Do you have this awareness? Is the dhikr of Allah jari in your body? How many maqams there are to do the dhikr of Allah? Allah Ta'ala has made it jari. There are seven lataif Allah Ta'ala has given within ourselves. And Allah Ta'ala has to do dhikr. How many thousands, millions of people are passing from this world? They don't know that their body and their organs, Allah Ta'ala gave them the levels, the maqams, the status. They came. They're like without life, they're lifeless and they're departing lifeless all life long, eating, drinking, meat and drinking and passing the life. My brothers, this is a great, great ni'mah. Sit with the walis of Allah, revive your body, revive your lataif, revive your soul. Every part of us, everything within us, revive it so it remembers Allah. So everything within us, 
with us should remember Allah. Everything, every atom, every molecule, every cell, the nucleus, Sultan Adhkar. Allah Ta'ala says, MashaAllah, you are, MashaAllah, pious people, and we used to read these things, and I explain them to you, those brothers who are, MashaAllah, who are following this path, MashaAllah, you brothers, you are, you are making effort, and you know this, that how the wujud, the body, becomes alive to the dhikr of Allah, and how the shaykh, he makes effort on his students to explain this to them. Now tell me, that how many people, millions and billions, depart from this world, lazy, negligent, without the awareness. Allah Ta'ala says, they came lifeless, they lived a lifeless life, they had no life, and they departed from the world lifeless. And we were before this, then we came into the wujud. Do you understand? We were hidden, like a child is in the womb of the mother. He's not born into this world. He doesn't know anything. He's not born. He has no awareness, no conscience. Do I remember that time I was in the womb of my mother? What did I do? Where did the food come from? Where did the drink come from? Everything happened. But I'm not aware. In the same way, our, our ruh, they were all present. Allah Ta'ala then sent us into the world within this physical body. And so when we die, we go back to that life with the soul. So this physical life is for a little while. We don't even know. When we die... When we pass away, we won't even know about this dunya that we're finished. Yes, so we come as a guest and we depart as a guest. Just like we remember when the arwah, alim arwah, Allah says, Alastu bi rabbikum. That do you remember your root? Does it remember Allah has taught this? And every one of us answered, Yes, Allah, you are our Rabb. All of the root, the bodies, the people who are ever to live in this world until qiyamah. Until judgment day, everyone was standing there openly, aware, consciously awake. Allah, we accept you as our Rabb. So we were then, we were then, before this world came. Then Allah took us out of that spiritual world, the alim arwa, brought us into this world, the earth. And then we forgot our Rabb. We forgot our Lord. We say we haven't, but we have. Because this life Allah Ta'ala has given to us in this world, our wujud was told that every second you have to remember me, Allah Ta'ala says, in the world, in the planet earth. Allah said, I created you to remember me. Don't be ghafil in the world. The person who's a ghafil, he doesn't have a life. He doesn't have a life. It's like he's not existing. A one second, a person who's not aware and conscious and remembering his Lord, his name is cut from the list of the dhakirin. His name is cut. So my friends... My brothers, this is not the situation that we have an option. Shall we do dhikr or not? Shall we remember Allah or not? Shall I learn dhikr or not? Shall I attain this ilm or not? This is compulsory fard because we have to go back to the spiritual world. And again, we have to show Allah our ruh that Allah, we remembered you. We were with you. And we understood in the world that you are our creator. Not that oh, Allah I had a bit of a problem and I forgot you, Allah. Oh, I had a business and I had issues and I had problems and worries and depression. So I had to forget you, Allah. I couldn't remember you. No, doesn't matter. And then when we have issues and problems, we cry running to Allah. And the world, the earth and the heavens, they all laugh. What is this? He leaves his asal, his genuine maqsad, objective of life. So brothers, with passion, desire and love, remember Allah. Remember loudly, silently, scream to Allah with love by crying. Allah says, however you remember me, I listen to you. I listen to you. Whatever is your condition, your state of emotion, Allah Ta'ala hasn't imprisoned his dhikr in within any boundary, wall or condition or emotion. Allah says, I've not got any preconditions. It's not got any list of criterion. Just remember me. Allah says, I just like you remember me. So should we remember Allah? No, tell me. So let's go forth. Let's step forth. Go forward. Learn dhikr. Learn the asbaq. The seven lataif. At least learn these. The seven lataif, the seven lessons, base lesson. First latifa qalb, then latifa ruh, then latifa sar, latifa khafi, latifa khfa, then latifa nafs, then latifa qalbiya. These are the seven lataif, the seven lessons that we have to learn within our body. Naqshbandi Sheikh, he revives each and every one of these and they become alive. And the person becomes alive. And how does he get life with the ismizad, the name of Allah? And as he then teaches that latifa Allah, that latifa becomes alive. Then he comes into his original state. Do you know this or not? Do you say Allah inside? Does the heart say Allah? Raise your hands if your heart says Allah. Raise your hands. Everyone's heart, mashallah. And the person who's learned this, then he cannot stop. The heart will not stop. Look, the wujud within us, this is not in our control. 
It's not in our control. The control, a person who's done and learned the dhikr of Allah, tell me, can he stop? Oh, I don't want to do dhikr anymore. I don't have a mood. I don't want to do dhikr now. Show me this. Can you do that? Can you stop it? It's not according to your desire. Your heart, you've taught it. You've revived it. It's alive. It's come into its original good state. Now, I have to compare the how many people are living the life in this world and it's the lifeless, devoid of life. Yes, physically they are dahir. They're moving around. But the asal, the original life is within. Aha, the original life is within. Allah says, if you don't become mine, how will it become yours? This is what Allah Makbal said in that uh, poem. That at least become yourself first. Recognize yourself first. Of what are you? What is your reason for being created? So anyway, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah. Thousands of uh, thanks, thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should have be the shakirin. We should be the shakir. Remember two things. We have got sins, fine. But the dhakir and the shakir doesn't look towards the sins and worries about that. Every moment he should strive and try that. Let me get away from Allah's disobedience. Let me run away from Allah Ta'ala's disobedience. Whatever Allah Ta'ala has given us orders as his ahkams, his laws, we should be obedient and we should fulfill the laws and the requirements of Allah. May Allah Ta'ala give us all the tawfiq. Amin recite the Dorood Sharif.